What's going on, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with the man Isaac Hess, former pro pitcher. We're going to talk about pitching today. We're going to talk about when, maybe what age, what stage of your career, your, your baseball journey, should you start throwing a curveball, and also how to throw a curveball because Isaac's got a nasty curveball. We were just playing catch. It's pretty freaking nasty. So uh, he's going to talk about how he grips it, how he throws it. Um, and we're going to get into all that. But before we do, I want to talk about what Isaac's got going on. It's called Cage List. It's basically the Airbnb of backyard batting cages. Tell us a little bit about it before we get into the curveball. Real quick, it's just a website that you can go on. You can list your backyard batting cage and start making money, renting it out to local players in your community. Um, you can be found. Uh, anybody that goes on to Cage List will be able to search. Uh, backyard batting cages in their area by doing a quick simple search um, they can choose from many different listings and then just pick one and book one you you choose whether or not you want to approve the booking based on their profile once you approve it they have a time slotted to go use it and it's that easy you get the money inserted in your bank account your backyard batting cage becomes a instant uh, income stream for your family you can start paying for your travel ball expenses the gloves the bats all the stuff that uh, adds up for all your youth baseball and softball players. So if you have a backyard batting cage, you can go rent or you can go list it on the site. It takes about 10 minutes and it's free. Very cool. Very cool. Go check it out. I'll leave the link down in the description below where you can learn more about that. Let's talk about it. The curveball. You train young players uh, in Los Angeles. If you guys are in California area, go check them out. Made baseball, but. When are you instructing these or telling these parents, you know, that maybe this is a good time for your son to start throwing it? When did you start throwing it? What's your whole philosophy on like when a player should start throwing the curveball? Good question. Um, so it's probably the, one of the most common things for, for a young pitcher. As soon as he starts pitching the ball, he wants to throw a curveball right away. Um, you know, they fall in love with the feeling of watching that ball dip curve, slide, move a little bit, it's, it's more exciting than the fastball. Um, first and foremost, if you're a coach watching this, you got to teach your, your pitchers that fastball commit. First off, throwing strikes is the most important thing. You got to be able to get the ball over the plate. Once they start learning how to pitch, they got to throw strikes. Then it's fastball command, being able to put the ball on the outside part of the plate or the inside part of the plate, up or down. After that, <clears throat> you really should be teaching the change up after that. But what is the reality of the world is everybody wants to throw a curveball. So a lot of parents that, uh, of the kids I coach is ask me, Coach Isaac, when, when is it okay for my kid to start throwing a curveball? There is no one absolute answer for that, right? It's, a dependent, it's dependent upon the makeup of the player, his body, the way his arm works. Um, but as, a, as kind of a baseline, I believe that 12 years old is, is the earliest age you should start teaching a kid. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you'll go out to some of these tournaments and you'll see 10-year-olds throwing 50 curveballs in a game. I've seen that. It's heartbreaking and it's, it's something sometimes, I don't know if you've seen that, but you want to stop the game and ask the coach, what the heck is going on? Why is this happening? Um, a, it's just not necessary. It's not a good fundamental for pitching and B, it's going to crush their arm. Um, but even you know, beyond the fact that it's going to hurt them, you shouldn't be allowing that to happen because they should be focusing on throwing their fastball more often. Um, if you watch any big league pitcher, 95% of big league pitchers probably throw at least 70 to 80% fastballs. I don't know if that's an exact number, but from my perception, that's, that's pretty accurate. So you got to be able to throw the fastball. But the curveball, um, starting from about 12 uh, is when you should teach them. If they're 8, 9, 10, just let them know that it's going to be an exciting thing that they can learn later on in their baseball development and pitching development. But first and foremost... There's not one exact way to grip the curveball throughout my career. I played with many different pitchers that, that gripped it different ways, but this is a pretty common way. Um, you're going to grip it with your two fingers together on the inside of the horseshoe this way. I don't like to be on the outside. I like to feel like I can grip the inside of the seam. <clears throat> and then you're thinking fastball, fastball, fastball. When you get here, you're just letting your arm be loose. You don't want to have tension. You want to just create top spin. You want to get out in front of that pitch and create top spin. So you're not trying to make it curve. The mindset is more to create the opposite of what a four seam fastball is. Instead of having it be nice, clean backspin, 
we want to do the exact opposite and create top spin. So A, we don't want to overthrow the curveball. It's going to make our curveball less effective if we throw it too much. B, it's going to hurt our arm if we uh, throw it too much. And C, fundamentally as a pitcher, we need to focus on teaching our young pitchers to get ahead with the fastball. You know, 90, 95% of the time, get ahead with that fastball and work off of your fastball. Have the mindset of letting your arm be loose and free when you throw the curveball. Don't try to make it curve. Instead, just create topspin. One way that you can do that is by learning how to flip the ball like this. There's other curveball drills that you can do as well, um, like using a half empty water bottle. Um, just being able to create that tumble is what you want to start with from a young age and just teaching them that they shouldn't rely on their curveball. They shouldn't fall in love with their curveball. They should take pride in being able to get hitters out with their fastball. There was uh, one, one thing I did uh, a while back. I actually made a video, old video, about I had two baseballs and just drilled a hole in both sides and got like a double-sided lag bolt and just screwed the two baseballs together um, and then was able to have that ball on top so you could really focus on getting that, that top spin. One other thing I want to mention, my, my curve, my slurve, was not my best pitch, but something that really helped me was like understanding that what you feel isn't always real because I would get on the side of the ball a lot of the times but when I thought in my head that I was getting like really hooked it almost felt like I was like this when I was throwing it but that's obviously not what was happening so understanding what you feel it isn't always what is real when you're throwing that pitch so if you can kind of keep that in your mind you may have to over exaggerate on something to find that right spot that right release point um, but I'm going to leave the curveball stuff to Isaac because he's got a way better curveball than I ever had. But another point is when I was in uh, college, I started throwing the, my slurve, my curve, in I want to say I was probably 13, but I had already went through puberty, so I was this height at that age. But then I didn't really throw it. In, when I was at Auburn University, I threw fastball, sinkers, 97% sinkers. So you don't need a curveball. Anyone that's saying they, you need a curveball, you don't need a curveball. You know, I got away at Division One school throwing mostly fastballs, okay? So it, it can be done, and that's something that you really, like Isaac said, should really focus on first and foremost is fastball, movement, speed, and location. If you could do that, then you can progress down the other, to the other pitches as you get older into, into a good, good suit. So. And from a young age, as a pitching coach or coach teaching your pitchers, you want to teach them to develop a changeup, and they should be throwing the changeup in warm-ups consistently testing out different grips, trying to figure out what feels comfortable, what they feel confident in. And then once they do progress and kind of graduate to being able to throw a curveball, the priority in teaching them is, is telling them to just be able to throw it for a strike. Too often times we want it to be super sharp and nasty, when in reality, if it breaks you know, this much, it's gonna, it's gonna throw a hitter off enough to probably not want to swing or to get themselves out. Either a soft contact pop-up, a weak grounder, but if they can't throw it for a strike, then you know a good hitter is going to go back into the dugout and say, hey, the guy has a curveball, but he doesn't throw it for a strike ever. If you see it out of his hand, don't swing at it. So got to be able to throw it for a strike and think about doing that from a young age. Uh, that's a great, great tips. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in learning more about cage list, I'll leave the link down below. You can check Isaac out if you're ever in a Los Angeles, California area, uh, made baseball. Again, I'll leave all the information down below. If you have any comments about how to throw a curveball or different curveball grips or, or at what age, whatever it is, hop down in the comment section below. Let us know. We'll hop down there and talk to you. Um, thank you so much, Isaac. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next video.